Well, okay. <clears throat> Reporting is ordered, sir. You awake? Sort of. You forget your coffee? For once, I don't need it. I gotta talk to you about something. Um, okay. Here I am. You didn't tell me you knew Leonard. I, I thought we'd been through that. Let me finish. I spent the night going through his stuff, and I want to know what you think. About what? You obviously know more about this place than I do. About what went on here, since I left at least. What do you mean, you went through his stuff? Uh, what are you looking for? Someone calls me and says Rachel is alive. Then a lipstick appears out of nowhere. It feels like something weird's going on. Rachel is dead. That's what everyone says. But maybe the story deserves a second pass. There are too many gray areas. Look, the storm is dying down. You'll be able to leave soon and go back to your life. And you can forget about the whole thing, like you did ten years ago. <laughs> what do you care about this old business? It's not worth losing sleep over just to play detective. Look at it this way. I've always had a secret passion for Sherlock Holmes. Okay, let me hear what you're thinking. If there's one thing Leonard taught me, it's that you've got to listen to what's buzzing in your head. First, it might just be a confusing noise, but if you connect the dots, then it starts making sense. And right now, I've got a beehive in my head. <sighs> All right, let's go hunt some bees then. All right. So, I'm assuming something is not right with the original story. I have to investigate the clues in the Leonard's room and shed light. So this is progress. <coughs> God, sorry, I have a bad cough. I'm gonna look around some more of the hotel, see if I find anything else. Uh, I may edit some parts out because I might not find anything. But if I find any notes, I'll uh, yeah. I imagine you're locked up in a room full of moose head mounts and a fat secretary who brings you reports about cats stuck on trees. Let me guess. Mindy? <laughs> Wendy. No way! <laughs> Her name is Wendy. She's not a fitness freak, and she's my boss. <laughs> oh, God. If anything, I'm the secretary. I bet she works you to the bone. <laughs> uh, plus, she's a wildlife freak. Mine's the only head that could end up hanging on the wall. I realize just now, I don't know what you look like. Well, I'd say pretty much a local guy. Wait, don't say anything. I want to think about it, and then I'll come up with an identikit. I thought I was the one that got bored. You do one too, then, and then we'll compare. Uh, okay. But if Wendy finds out... <laughs> All right, let's do some uh, exploring. I like the music. Pig. Oh, wow, okay. Washroom isn't great. take this kind of feel like I need it all right washrooms have been checked I don't think we went in here a 
This is connects to the kitchen. This should be... I don't know where this goes. Boiler room area? Yeah, the laundry and stuff. Okay. Uh, let's check the laundry room. A lot of flooding. Ben, Ben, Ben. Meg, Hal, Alyssa, Barbara. Okay. Let's move along. What's in here? Ooh. Oh, uh, crawl space area. Music so soothing. Oh, we're in the church. Holy crap. Some makeshift beds here. Or sleeping bags, whatever. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, hopscotch. Alright, I guess we know our way to the church now. What else is here? Ski Lodge. Yeah, this is the door that was blocked. Ski route. Alright. How long do you think it'll take me to get into town using skis? Uh, somewhere along the lines of never. Just wondering. You could get to Dry Gulch Summer Ranch in two or three hours. But from there, you'd need another five or six hours. Five or six? Okay, whatever. I don't know how to ski anyway. What? I know, it's ridiculous. Leonard was from Sacramento. Oh, at least you won't risk your life. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I also have a couple of serious defects. I'm all ears. I only placed third with 19 minutes and 14 seconds for eating five pounds of hot dogs at the county fair. I so totally admire you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm guessing there's a few items in the hotel where we could talk to Irvin about. Like mom's car. You think I can have Mom's car taken away? Sure. Uh, we'll send up a tow truck. What's it still doing there? We left with Uncle Henry, so the car stayed here. She must have been furious. Yeah, but she took her keys with her. In fact, they're somewhere in Portland. I see. Anyway, at the time it was a real clunker. Now it's... vintage, I'd say. Cool. Uh... cool. Found anything interesting? Leonard's motorcycle is one of those things that I should maybe take before the sale. Oh, 
I love bikes. What's the make? It's a Su-400, single-cylinder, two-stroke. Wow. You seem to know what you're talking about. Leonard and I took it apart and put it back together, like, 200 times, I think. You should keep it as a keepsake. I spent the last 10 years trying to eliminate every possible memory, and now I'm supposed to keep one that even requires me paying insurance? Well, doesn't sound so bad. Insurance on memories. I think I'll sell it to some collector. Well, if you want, I know a few in Livingston. Oh, thanks. No sweat. I'm going. Later. Does this lead me? Oh. Okay. Hope I dried those. Okay, let's make my way back up here. Hmm. Huh. What room is that? 217. What was the room in The Shining? I forget it. I know it was 2 something. I just watched it recently too. Well, I think in the books it's a different room too, also. Uh, so, I pretty much checked every place that I could find that had a, the radio talk conversations. Alright, let's go back to our room and. Uh, Speak with Irving about the investigation we have. All right, let's investigate. Let's see what we got here. This is just this is just the beginning. Lousy pedophile, beware! Shutting yourself into a gross den between mountains will not protect you. You'll pay for what you've done. Can't see your smile, honey. Today I saw Rachel. There's light everywhere. Rachel doesn't want to do her speech therapy exercises. Love you, Rachel. Rachel says she feels it low. I heard you, Rachel. You were right behind me. Rachel is sad. Strange's Gossip of the Month, uh, Rachel's friend, Glenda Ferguson. I saw Rachel in Timberland Hotel. A 29-year-old girl from Great Falls claims she saw Rachel Foster, her schoolmate, suicidal in 1981 in a corridor at the first floor of the Timberland Hotel, but she ran away without saying nothing. Glenda revealed to the Daily Reporters in that she tried to approach her, but she went away. She also added, I don't know how it's possible, but I was de it was definitely Rachel. This is just the last episode of the most famous love and death story in the county. Rachel committed suicide after her affair with Leonard McGrath, 30 years older than the teenager, was exposed to the public. We tried to speak with Rachel's father, Shepard Foster, but he refused. Someone says the young girl is still alive. Creepy. Keep follow our monthly update to find out more of the story and more. Sorry about that, guys. 
let's get back to the investigation. Buffalo and call, Rachel is still here. Rachel's death. 16 year old Rachel Foster has been found dead. Uh, Sheriff McDonald's at suicide. We have her last words. The body of Rachel, daughter of Pastor Solomon Foster, was found yesterday late in the evening at Wishard Creek. 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 God damn it. <laughs> uh, near uh, Sheep Mountain in Missoula County. The investigators confirmed she jumped from a 90 feet ridge over the mountain lake. Wow. I mean, she may have survived. We found a letter with a clear intent to put an end to her life said Sheriff McDonald after the events at the Timberline, Ho Timberline Hotel and her vanishing we were all worried about the tragic ending. Wishard Creek. I keep saying crack. Why? And I, uh, it's an isolated place in winter. The investigation investigators think Rachel managed to reach it by taking a bus from Helena to Piltsville and then eventually by hitchhiking. No one at the moment came up uh, to witness the presence of the girl around the t nearly town, nearby town of Twin Creeks. Twin Creeks, really. <laughs> Alright. Uh, Rachel was nine weeks pre- Wow, really? Rachel was nine weeks pregnant, Doc Brown confirmed to the Daily. She wasn't engaged with anyone, and Pastor Foster affirmed that he did not notice any strange behaviors in Rachel. There's nothing more to say, the MDs added. Rachel's in Leonard McGrath. She was 16 years old. Jesus, dude. Rachel became close to Leonard McGrath during the last months as she spent several hours at the Timberline Hotel in order to correct her dys dyslexia. The ro the romantic liaison between the 49-year-old processors and the teenage has been secret until McGrath's wife, Claire Wilson, exposed the scandal, eventually fleeing from the hotel with the couple's daughter, Nicole, a week ago. Wow, okay. Uh, about Rachel Foster. Rachel was kind and truly a good girl, said Matthew Lawrence's assistant, assistant to Pastor Foster. She wouldn't commit a sin like suicide by herself. She must have been overwhelmed by the sense of guilt. A week ago, an affair between the teenager and Leonard McGrath, the Timberline Hotel's owner, a former professor of uh, astrophysics, was exposed with great scandal all over the county. The family is in mourning and asks for respect. Jesus. Uh, and it shocked the entire building's heart, the principal told us today. It felt like a huge weight heavy on our souls. We're a tight-knit community, and after this tragedy hit, everyone was struck pretty hard. We just want everyone to know that you're not alone, and you could always find a family in the Helena High School. So all the students and teachers, I guess, filled her locker with notes and flowers. So that's her dad. In this article from a couple years back, there's a statement by some girl who affirms she saw Rachel in a hallway at the Timberline. Who's this girl? Uh, a classmate, Glenda Ferguson. I tore out the page. I think the magazine was MT Woman. Nicole, that's a gossip magazine. They would sell their mother, even their cousins <laughs> and nephews, just for a bunch of new readers. But she was a classmate. She couldn't have been wrong. Rachel fell 90 feet into a void. She can't be alive. I thought I was the skeptical one here. So I'm just looking at the map. So Timberline, and Helena's nearby, the town. Huh, okay. So, listen to this. Graphologists doubt the authenticity of the suicide note left by the girl. Who said that? An investigative journalist. The article came out a year after her death. You think it's a setup? Perhaps. Okay, well, I'll hear you out.
I found a copy of the local paper, dated December 29th, 1981, the day that the body was discovered. According to the forensics report, Rachel had been dead for days. She was nine weeks pregnant. Huh. Yeah, that was the official version. You know, I can't stop thinking about Rachel's father. Reverend Foster. He was a very strict man. Harsh. Even for pastor standards. He and Leonard spent hours debating the nature of reality, the universe, and God. Well, opposites often attract. Do you ever see him? Rarely. He gives a service once in a while. Back in the day, I thought he was a kind of reptilian with a human skin suit. His daughter's death destroyed his ego. His faith made him even more cynical and lonely than he already was. I can remember him demanding, demanding, demanding total perfection from Rachel. That was insane. You don't think he could have harmed his daughter? Hey, no, no. But... Even Reverend Foster is a player we shouldn't underestimate in this story, just saying. Uh, right. Remember the lipstick I found downstairs? Yep, you made a big deal about it. It doesn't smell. Should it? After they've been open for a while, lipsticks smell really bad. Maybe there's been other women. I mean... From what I gather, Leonard was a sort of recluse. And don't forget, the lipstick is really old. Um... Could the cold have preserved? Possibly. Anything else? Hey, I found a book in Leonard's things. It's a collection of poetry, but it's got notes written in it. Did your father write them? What do they say? Dates, notes, thoughts. Listen to this. Today I saw Rachel, or Rachel is sad, or Rachel says she feels alone. He kept a diary about her. But the book was printed eight years after Rachel's death. Do you mean it's like he was talking with Rachel after she died? As if he saw her. Well, I mean, there must be an explanation. Of course, there's an explanation for everything, and we've got to find it. Okay, I'd say that's enough. Yeah, that's enough for tonight. Uh, today, or what the hell time is it? You think there's a lot to dig up in this old story? Maybe, maybe not. Until I know exactly what happened. Any objections? You don't need my approval. Good job. You're getting the hang of it. But, sometimes it's better to leave the skeletons in the closet. And once they come out, you never know what they'll have to say. It's a risk I already considered. I can handle it. Hard-headed like your father. <laughs> Trust me. At least on this one thing. Go to bed. You need it. Agent Crawford, this bit of advice. <sighs> okay, I'll she follow it to the T. <laughs> she just made me sneeze. On, I mean, sneeze. I mean, made me yawn also. Day five? Day five. Here we go. All right. This is getting interesting. <laughs>